Senator, what's your take on this? Um, what, which, what specific steps would you take to create jobs going forward if you are reelected? And could you also comment on the, uh, the tax deferral that Mr. Cohen mentioned? Um, well, actually, I'm, I'm quite excited, excited about it. If, if uh, our, uh, our candidate becomes the governor, he has a extensive program on how he is going to uh, in increase job opportunities and, and grow jobs in our state. Um, as we all know, sadly, uh, we are not coming out of this economic collapse very quickly, to say the least, probably another couple of years. And we know that jobs lag the comeback. So that's going to be the last piece. So we really have to be quite creative. And I'm excited about what he's talking about. He's talking about um, increasing, doubling actually, the small business revolving loan program, which would help uh, our community banks and our credit unions. And they would provide the extra money for the funding that would be $2,500 to $5,000 for each new hire at a small uh, business. That would be a tax credit. He's also talking about revolving loans for uh, home energy conservation and renovation projects. There's a lot that we can do in our homes that would provide for uh, jobs for working class people, like uh, insulating our homes better, doing our windows more airtight. There are a variety of things. Uh, he's also talking about green jobs, which is something we uh, have seen a bit of here in Westchester because we're having SUNY very often work with companies that are interested in coming here and uh, we are able to develop their workforce for them. Senator, so, excuse me, I just I wanted to get a comment from you though on the tax deferral, the credit tax deferral that Mr. Cohen mentioned. I wanted to get your take on that. On the tax deferral. Mm -hmm. Was I listening to class um, Oh, the legislators approved a three-year deferral on annual tax credits that cumulatively exceed two million dollars. And these tax credits are used in Empire Zones, and they're used yeah, by I developers. Yeah, I just arranged tax the credits for uh, um, a housing group in uh, New Rochelle. Uh, anything we can do with the tax credits that we can maintain, that we can aff afford to fund, obviously want to do. We want to do everything that is possible. I'm looking specifically at the green industry stuff because I think that's where our best bang for the buck is going to be. We are ahead of many other states and many, many other countries. And we have the engineers and the research, the science going on. And the important thing is to take that science from the universities and transform it into a program where corporations can develop what is being okay, researched. Senator, but I just want to clarify, though. So you, you're saying you're not in favor. You're I not in favor of these tax deferrals. I, I am in favor of anything that is going to assist business in in our state. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. Okay. Thank okay. you, guys. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, we don't have a lot of time, but, and I want to talk about everybody's favorite subject, which is Albany. Um, in the polls that we've conducted, um, Senator Oppenheimer. In every single race of state legislatures that we've asked, in addition to how people feel about the individual candidates for their district, we asked um, on the subject of Albany if they had a chance to remove every incumbent that's there regardless of party. In every single poll, more than 50 percent of the respondents, Democrats, Republicans alike, said yes. Right. Uh, I'm curious from you, why wouldn't New York State be better off if every incumbent was gone, and we started from scratch there in Albany with all the festering problems that happened in the Capital District. It really has very little to do with people, and it has to do with the psychology and the various agencies and governmental rules and regulations that have been put in place. It has to do with the culture. And it doesn't really that much have to do with people. Well, help me with the culture. For the people who aren't there in the cloakrooms, what's most pervasive, the problem there in the culture. We've had Republican leaderships, Democratic leaderships, Republican governors, Democratic governors, but we always get late budgets, it seems. The frustration keeps building. What is the problem systemic in that culture that needs to change? Well, I think there's a great number of opportunities for reform, and I will name just a few of them. And these are some of the things that have me excited about working with our hopeful next governor, Cuomo. One has been um, looking at a consolidation of our agencies, and we have a great many, and I think if we bring 
the groups together that we are going to see things happen much more quickly and it will also save us uh, costs. We have um, a budget process that is not very workable, we all know that. I think if we budgeted for two years instead of for one year, I think we would be able to move our budgets along more quickly, uh, which we did. We did have an on-time budget four times in a row, but that was like three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, not recently. I think if we instituted a uh, IBO, an independent budget office, I think that would produce a much more rapid. And uh, if we went to GAAP, if we went to generally accepted accounting principles, I think that would produce an on-time budget much more quickly. 